Money makes the world go round in Football Manager. Whether you're trying to sign some new players for your team or upgrade your facilities, it's always good to have a healthy bank balance to help you out. But sometimes it's hard to do that. So today I'm going to try and help you with that by giving you some tips and tricks on how to make and save money in FM24. These tips will apply whether you're a big team or a small team, so it'll be helpful to hopefully everyone. Some obvious tips, some that are more hidden under the hood of a game that you might not notice. And whilst none of these are going to make you £40 million in Instantly, they'll certainly save you enough cash for one or two additional transfers across the course of your season which could make the difference between winning a trophy and not. Before we start a quick apology because I am pretty ill at the minute so my voice might sound strange so hopefully it's still listenable and two the other thing if you could be an absolute legend for us and smash that like button we'd be very appreciative it would really help the videos here on the channel and on top of that comment down below your money making and money saving tips as well so everyone else can look at them get a big list in the comments if you think we you've missed something here let us know because it's going to be helpful to anyone who checks it out subscribe if you haven't already and let's get into tip number one my favorite one the easiest way to make money the one that most of you might already know about but it's so simple so easy to do and in some saves can make you a few million pounds instantly so we're here with Chelsea we've got six million pounds in the transfer budget 200k in the wage budget and we're going to make some quick cash by going to the transfers clauses page now this is dependent on what team you are some teams will have clauses to sell some won't if you don't know what I mean by this if you go into this transfer clauses page anything with a pound sign on it can be actioned whether it's buying a clause to save you money in the long run or selling a clause to make some quick cash now if these players are still at your club like Mason Burstow this is a clause that we can buy so we can spend money to potentially save us some cash in the long run. But most of you aren't going to be bothered about that. Most of you want to make some money straight away. So if you find anyone with a pound sign that is no longer at your club, take Emerson here, for example, we get some certain fees based on if he hits certain criteria over there at West Ham. If he gets another eight appearances, we make £400,000, etc, etc. But this one here we can sell. After another 50 plus appearances for West Ham, we'll get another 400k from them for Emerson. Or we can sell this up front now for 320 24k, which is obviously less than the full price of a clause, but a lot of us, especially in the early years of our saves, would happily take this cash early on. It's going to take him a season or two to get that amount of appearances for West Ham, and that's providing he doesn't get injured or sold off. So whilst we've got the chance here, it could be a good idea to sell this clause, and then that money will go straight into your transfer budget, and you'll be able to spend it. I know we get a lot of comments sometimes. People that have played the game for years comment saying, I never knew this was a thing. Well, it is. It's not every clause that you can sell. Some we can't do anything about but this one we could sell for some money as so we could then go down and do the same for Billy Gilmore there's apparently some clauses for make sure you weigh up each clause though don't sell them all for the sake of it when it's a percentage of next sale for example where Tariq Lamptey will get 15% of his next transfer fee away from Brighton it might be worth keeping that if they do sell him for 50, 60 million. We could get a nice chunk of cash from that. Or like I say, if you just want the cash early on, this could be a good clause to sell. There's no guarantee he leaves Brighton for a huge fee, could leave at the end of his contract and we get nothing. So weigh up all your options. But now our transfer budget has gone to 10 million from six and that's a completely new player that we could be able to sign now with that extra cash. Now I should note that was with Chelsea and if you're playing with say Wrexham in League 2 there's going to be less chance of those huge fees but always check them because you could find some money that's good relative to your club size. I've had it before where I was managing Mansfield in League 2 and they sold a player a few years ago to the Championship if I remember correct and I was able to go ahead and make some instant cash straight away that really gave us our transfer budget for a whole season just because we had a percentage of next sale on a certain player. Again weigh up your options but always give it a check because you could make some easy cash straight away. This next tip is less of a click a button and get some money type tip. It's more of a theory, a way to play football manager that in the long run will save you a lot of money and make sure that you don't lose out on any kind of player sales that you didn't want to. And that is all about monitoring your contracts. Which so sounds obvious, but this is what I want you to do in your saves. I want you to monitor your club's contracts two years ahead of time. A lot of people wait until the start of a season, see which players are out of contract at the end of the year and then offer them deals. But if you stay two years ahead of a curve, not only can you sell your players for more, you also reduce the risk of them saying, look, I'm going to leave at the end of a contract and then you don't make any money from them whatsoever and they leave on a free. So to do this, go to your squad screen. If you haven't got the contract information up here about the expiry date, you can 
can go to this and click contract and then you'll see everyone based on their expiry date click it and you can sort so that the people with the closest expiry date come first see what year you're in and work two years ahead so we're in 2023 these are the players whose contracts are up at the end of this season but I'm not only focusing on them I'm also focusing on everyone down to Kepa there so Kepa to Thiago Silva until 2025 these are all the players whose contracts I need to think about and I'm trying to think about them as early as possible the reason for this is if I knew that I wasn't offering Malang Sar a contract I should really be selling him now now you could argue that okay but you could keep him for another year first get some game time out of him but obviously you guys can weigh up your squads yourselves and I know Malang Sar is never going to be part of my team if I was to leave him for another year his valuation of six million pounds might drop down to three million pounds or something on those lines we need to sell him whilst his stock is high and that's what we're going to do here so now I know okay I want to sell Malang Sar and I can go ahead and try and do that whether it's by offering him out or hiring an intermediary which by the way new introduction this year very easy to get rid of Deadwood players like Malang Sar that might normally have not got offers before and this reduces the risk of me hanging on to Sar for another year going to sell him next summer when he's got one year left on his deal and then maybe no club is interested he comes to me and says look I'm going to leave at the end of a contract and then we suddenly get no money for him now this happens way more often than you might think and it's something you should definitely stay on top of so I can go ahead now and say Thiago Silva okay maybe willing to let him go Ian Matson I'd like to keep so I can go ahead make sure we get that sorted so we don't lose out on any of these players for a free transfer so keep an eye on it monitor your contracts a few years ahead and that will reduce your risk of losing money on players which will happen far more often than you might realize before I show you the next tip just to let you know I do have my own channel linked in the description down below where we do some football manager rebuilds more entertaining as opposed to informative content like we do here on FM Scouts so if you feel like you'd enjoy that feel free to go into the description and check it out I'd massively appreciate it and I really do think you'd enjoy the content and I promise you my voice doesn't normally sound like this so it's usually a little bit better Speaking of contracts, one way that you can save a lot of money is when a player is asking for a new contract or you want to offer a player a new contract is don't give it them straight away. Click a button that allows you to offer it at the end of a season. I'm going to show you what I mean now and I also need to explain a few things because we've spoke about this before. Someone has then pointed a floor out to me in this method and I've now found a workaround to get rid of that floor. So ben Chilwell here, as we were monitoring earlier, has got two years left on his contract so it's about time that we decide if we want to extend it and we do. So we're going to go ahead and offer from a new deal. Now he's on £190,000 a week. Normally you go into a contract negotiation as so. He wants about £230. So we'll try and negotiate this down and we've got him to settle on £190,000. But if you try this instead, you can normally save yourself money. So I've reloaded the save. We'll go ahead and speak to Ben Chilwell about his contract. Again, we go ahead and offer him one, but instead of doing it as immediate here, you can actually click this drop down and start the contract at the end of a season. Now that was where I used to leave the tip. I used to say look if you give him the contract at the end of the season if he's being paid £100,000 a week now and is going to be getting paid £200,000 when you give him this new contract if you can get him to agree to having this contract next year you save yourself at £100 a week for the whole season and it saves you loads of money right well not quite I was kind of wrong about this because if we now go ahead using this end of season contract and then go to Ben Chilwell instead of asking for £230,000 a week he's asking for 300 k which is obviously far more than before and even if we try and negotiate this down, it's still going to be, you know, £250,000 a week or something along those lines instead of 190000 that we got him to agree to earlier. There we go. We got it down to 215 k but that's more than the 190000 So yes, we are getting him to sign his contract at the end of the year, which is saving us money, but we are having to pay him more on that contract than we would have done previously. But there is a work around this. Something that you should always do is discuss the new contract with the agent. When you do this, you're going to say, look, we're going to extend Ben Chilwell's contract contract how much would you want they'll then give you a price of what they think the contract should be you basically say that's too much money and nine times out of ten they will lower the amount that they want instead and if it doesn't work there's no negative effects of this it's just a very easy thing you can do to lower the amount that they're asking for but this is going to help us on what I mentioned earlier I'm now going to say look we're going to go away and think about it now though I'm going to go ahead and offer Ben Chilwell the contract doing the same thing that we did earlier where we ask him to start at the end of the season now remember last time we did this he wanted 300,000 pounds a week 
on his deal as his first negotiation. Now, though, when we do this, if we negotiate, he's starting off at 215,000. The reason for this is they've already agreed an amount with us, and then we've asked them to start the contracts at the end of the year, so they're locked into this. So now we can go ahead and negotiate the contract down, and we don't have to start at that super high 300,000 pounds a week price. So yes, offering a player a contract at the end of the season, as long as you talk to the agent before, will allow you to save some cash between now and the contract kicking in. And it really can make the world a difference. If you were playing him £100,000 now, and at the end of the season, we're going to pay him 200, we now get a full season worth of paying him £100,000 less than he would have done if we'd offered him the contract outright, which is going to save you so much money, more money in the wage budget, and that gives you more chance of signing new players for your team. Another tip when offering people contracts is getting rid of all of the special bonuses bonuses when it makes sense. Let's take Lucas Bergstrom, for example, here. Let's say we wanted to give him a new deal. Again, we'll discuss with the agent. We're then going to say he's asking for too much and it didn't work this time, but it was worth a go. There's no negative effect of doing so. We can then go ahead and negotiate a contract with Bergstrom. And when we do, he's asking for bonuses just for playing matches and whatnot, which usually don't make sense. Now, if you've got a player that maybe isn't going to play that much, it could make sense to do this. Say it's an old player who's been injury prone. You could knock down his wage and give him more of an appearance fee. That way, if he does end up playing, you pay him, but his general wage is going to be less. However, with most players, it makes sense to increase their salary a little bit and get rid of the appearance fee. Now, Bergstrom isn't really a starter for Chelsea, so this one isn't the best example, but let's imagine he was our first choice goalkeeper and he was going to play every game. There's no point giving him £5,000 a week. Often, you can actually remove these completely from the negotiation and you'll see very little change in what they're asking for. So I'm still going to try and get him down to £15,000. I'm also going to try and get rid of the yearly wage rise because over the course of a long-term deal, that really does add up. I'd always suggest if you can remove and exclude us from negotiations. I don't mind this one too much because he's not really going to play for us anyway. He's like our third choice goalkeeper. So if he ever got to 10 games, then fair play to him. I don't think he would. But when we offer him that now, he's asking for £20,000 a week. We're still going to try again at that 15 value. And after a bit of negotiating, we've eventually got him to £19,500 a week, which seems like a lot because originally he was asking for £17,000. But we've now got it so that this contract won't go up every single year. So it will remain at this value. And on top of that, he was asking for £5,000 every time he played a match and another few thousand as well every time he got a clean sheet. We've now got rid of that. And like I say, Bergstrom isn't the best example as a third choice goalkeeper. But if this is a guy that plays regularly for you, you're going to save yourself so much money over the long run. And you also stop your wages inflating because if you give everyone a yearly wage rise and you just forget about it, you'll notice every single summer your wage bill goes up and up and up. If you've got a player a, a £150,000 a week and he's got a 10% yearly wage rise. Every year, you're going to see £15,000 added to that contract. By the time his five-year deal's up, he'll be on around £200,000 a week. So it really is important. You keep an eye on these things. Don't just skip over them and only focus on the wage. Think about the whole contract negotiation because you can save yourself a lot of cash in the long run. An age-old tip for making cash in pre-season that a lot of you might know, but newcomers might not, is about arranging friendlies for extra money. But I'm going to show you an extra step today where you can actually make even more cash from your friendlies. So when you start a season, as you know, you'll have plenty of friendlies lined up, but you can actually set up your own friendlies for some extra cash. If we go to our calendar here, we can choose a day where we've got a free slot. Take this weekend here where we've got no friendly game on that weekend. We can go ahead and click arrange friendly. You want to set your venue to home match and then you can choose a team and you'll be able to see how much money the friendly will cost and how much it will make you. Celtic is an option, for example, for us where we will pay them 112,000, but we will receive an income of 269,000. Now, the bigger the club you are, the more money you could make. If you were Wrexham, you wouldn't be able to make this much money from a friendly match, but the money will be relative to your division. Here it's 100,000, which doesn't mean much to Chelsea, but to Wrexham, it might be 10K. Look, again, might not mean too much, but if you do three or four friendlies like this, you'll have made, say, half a million with Chelsea, which could be used for a new player. To them, obviously, it's not much money at all, but for some teams, it can really make the difference. If you can then get that money in, you can invest it into someone who might be worth 10 times more in a few years, it can really help. But one thing I want to show you this year is instead of doing a friendly match, actually do a cup. Now you'll need two days for this. So we're going to use both of these days and you'll have to choose three teams for this competition. So we've chosen Celtic. We're also going to choose Rangers and then we'll put Blackburn in there as well. Why not? So this tournament as a whole is going to cost us 510,000, but it will make us 850K or there or thereabouts. So your team's going to get fitness. And on top of that, you're going to make a lot of money. Obviously the teams have to agree to this. You'd then go ahead, give the competition a name. So there you go. That's the cup name and then hit confirm. That will then get sent out. They have to accept the proposal. And you might think that a million quid or so really isn't that much, but that could be enough to upgrade your facility 
facilities, upgrade your youth recruitment, your junior coaching, maybe sign a single player or so. And like I say, relative to every division, if you were Wrexham and you made £100,000 from all of this, that could be a new star striker who could get you promoted one year earlier than before and really make the difference in your save. And for my final tip, this is another one where it's a kind of method of playing that's going to help you in the long run. It's something that I always suggest. Some people might say it's wrong and controversial and never works for them, but for me, it's always the way to go. So as you all know in Football Manager, a lot of people play the game by signing young players, developing them and sell them on for a profit. Even if you're a big club, it still makes sense to do that sometimes, buying those wonder kids for 10 million, knowing that in a few years, they could be worth 70 or 80. And that really is, over the course of a long save, the way to make the most money. However, sometimes when we're in a transfer window and we're left with this amount of money, let's say you've spent all your money, you've done all your transfers, you've got the players you wanted this year, you've signed the wonder kids you wanted and you've got six mil left over. Or let's say it was two million, three million, whatever it was. A lot of people will just leave that there and forget about it and say, you know what, there's no one to sign. Let's just not spend it. But I'd always suggest that you should take that money and invest it. And what I mean by that isn't like real life investing. I mean, buy someone whose stocks are going to go up that you could sell on. Yes, three million isn't going to buy you a starter for Chelsea's first team. It might not even buy you a wonder kid that's good enough to ever play for them. But if you look well enough, you'll be able to find someone who's worth that three million pounds who you could develop to sell on for 30 million in a few years, as opposed to just leaving that three million in your balance and never spending it. Now, this player isn't the best example. We're on the first few days of this save here. We've done no scouting, but check your scout reports, find the cheap players. You can filter on your price by doing something like this, clicking transfer value. The cheapest player we've scouted with a decent rating is Chris Rigg. Now, Chris Rigg never has the potential to play for Chelsea here. He's not got the ability to play for us straight away, but he is going to cost us about £1 million. Like I say, you could leave that £3 million in your bank balance and never do anything with it, or you could spend it on someone like Chris Rigg, who's never going to make it at Chelsea, at least in the world of football manager, no offence Chris Rigg, but you could then buy him for that million, develop him in your youth team, make sure he's getting the right development, and in a few years, you can then look at him again and go, okay, he's now 18, how much could we sell him for? If you signed all of these young players and forgot about them and never really checked up on them, you probably aren't going to make your 1 million back because you'll probably forget and their contract will expire and it'll be a waste of money. But if you keep your eye on these players, you can make sure they're getting the right development. And like I say, even a small profit is a good profit. If you sold him for three or four million a couple years after signing him for 1 million pounds, you're still three or four times your money. If you do that with enough players, you'll be creating this constant stream of income into your team that you wouldn't have got if you hadn't spent that initial budget. So if you have that money left over, if you sign the players you want to, don't just leave it there. Invest it in some youth and that way you can make sure that your money is working for you, not just sitting there and making you profits over the long term of your save. So there you go, everybody. That's some tips on how to make and save money in FM24. My voice is going to need a rest now. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.